Beginning in the early 1990s, women flew combat aircraft, manned missile placements, served on ships in the Gulf, drove convoys in the desert, and assumed other roles making exposure to combat more likely. In the 2001 National Survey of Veterans, 12% of women veterans reported having served in a combat or war zone. According to the 1990 census, there were 1.2 million women veterans. By the next census in 2000, that number increased to 1.6 million, with an estimated 1.8 million by the end of fiscal year 2010. Part of the problem is that the women, when they come back from combat, are different people, just the same as men are, except they have other issues. In fiscal year 2004, the top three diagnostic categories for women veterans treated by the VA were hypertension, depression, and high cholesterol. We see denials that the psychological injuries, and in some cases even the physical in injuries, are the responsibility of the U.S. government to take care of those people, to address their injuries, and to provide the assistance that's necessary to get them back in the mainstream of public life. Nearly 65,000 women veterans were in the priority categories one and two, which include veterans with service-connected disabilities. For the women veterans disabled while in service to our country, the real battle is only the beginning. They face personal struggles to regain their health, reshape their lives shattered by physical and emotional disabilities, and to learn new trades or professions in order to rejoin the civilian world. Though many of them have never met, the women of the armed services are a band of sisters. And Jacksonville resident and author Kirsten Holmstead wants the world to know their stories. This huge experiment was being played out on the battlefield and nobody was paying attention. And if they were paying attention, they were scratching the surface. You know, they really weren't getting into the hearts and souls of these women. Homestead's first book is A Band of Sisters, American Women at War in Iraq. It explores the stories of some of the more than 180,000 American women who have served in Iraq since 2003, some holding a combat role that women have never had before. They're in firefights, they're supporting infantry, they're attaching to infantry, and they're searching Iraqi women and children. They're in the first or second security vehicle in convoys. Um, you know, they're, in, they're all over the battlefield, and that's why they're coming home wounded and with PTSD, and we need to support them. Kirsten spent more than three years working on her thesis for a Master's of Fine Arts at the University of North Carolina by interviewing women all over the country who served in the war. We have shooting situations at home. We get into areas where bullets are flying. She was inspired by the stories she was told from the first pilot to be shot down and survive to a 21-year-old turret gunner defending convoys. These women look like they don't have a care in the world, not a worry in the world. And I thought, oh my gosh, nothing could be further from the truth. They have so many challenges. Such sacrifices have been made by women like Sergeant Chrissy DiCaprio, a turret gunner with the military police in Baghdad, and Army Major Tammy Duckworth, who lost both her legs when the helicopter she was piloting was shot down. And there are great accomplishments, like Captain Vernice Armour, who was the first Afro-American female Marine pilot in the history of the Department of Defense. The important role of women in our nation's defense, and as part of the veteran population over the years, cannot be overstated. Their history is a glorious one, and sadly, one not always acknowledged or appreciated. The debt owed to all our veterans, and to women in particular, demands nothing less than full attention and action. <laughs>